Welcome to another episode of the It Gets Better by Square podcast. I'm your host, Louis Beans, and I'm here with Mark with the mic. What is up, guys? What is up? And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is Whoa. the first. What? Say it again, Mark. This is the first New Year podcast of the New Year. 2020, man. Yeah. Hey, we made it, and the bombs didn't drop. Yay! Well, we, we they provoked it already, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now we're just like, oh, shit. Now we have to get to the podcast bunker. Yeah, we need a bunker. We're just mm. going to steal Ned Flanders. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's nice enough to share. <laughs> I was watching that episode not so long ago, like a couple of days ago. When okay. they all kicked oh. him out of the, his own bunker because mm. he had a left-handed store and there was no use for him. <laughs> Damn, assholes. they all assholes, man. This is true. Hey, the Simpsons. Yes, all assholes. But it's funny. Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of um our tops of the decade last yeah. last. But Mark, you want to have a special episode this week to bring up another topic: fighting games. Yeah, because like they're so good, ones. and there's so many. Yeah. And we like the fighting games. We like to see people get kicked in the head. Yeah. And it actually became such a big thing of just watching the tournaments and, like, the Evolve and all the other, like, fighting tournaments. It became just a big presence now, so. so. And they're all pretty, for the most part, pretty uh, well-produced. Yeah. Um, They seem to, like... A lot of the tournaments now have a professional level to them. That's very different from like what you maybe we, we, what we actually you know what we bring up this topic, but this this entire topic actually evolves along with the production of the tournaments. Yeah, from like the two thousands before twenty ten, there was a certain you know jankiness, a little bit of homegrownness to a lot of the streams and whatnot. And then, like, because, you know, Street Fighter 4 was 2009, 2008, it started to get, like, Capcom was on board. And that's, like, I think that's one of the first, because, you know, I might be wrong, but Namco wasn't doing the whole thing with Tekken. Like, it was, not with 7. That's for damn sure. With 7, it stepped up this game 100%. Yeah. So, that was around the time when streaming fighting games was getting bigger. Yeah. And the production was more consistent. So yeah. yeah. And now the tournament scene is like very well produced and it's it's on every social media you can find it. You can even see it on ESPN. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like they've so, come a long way. That's ten years. So that's a good sign of where the video games are going and people are actually making careers of just playing fighting games. Mm-hmm. You gotta get it's good, bad. but you make a career of it. But not just the fighters, also the commentators, yeah. the like the on the scene uh, interviewers and stuff. Like, there's so many different parts now that there weren't that that don't feel intrusive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know how people actually feared for a long time of fighting games getting into esports because they were separate because of the way, you know, once you get business in there, it's a whole other crop of people that come in, the dudes in the suits. Yeah. You can't do this. You can't do that. Yeah, but. Problem. Because it's the fighting game companies themselves getting yeah. involved, it's less of that, and it's more of what do the fans want. And I think it just builds a stronger community. I know. the fighting games, which it's great. But it has, like, a better feel to it, you know? Yeah, so true. it doesn't it's feel natural. doesn't feel like it's all about the money, which is, like, that's the one reason I kind of watch fighting game tournaments and not so much, like, Overwatch League and what's the other one that's super big? Like, CSGO? Yeah, like a huge league. Like I would rather watch a smaller tournament on somebody's stream or something. Yeah, that's just like a few hundred people maybe playing, and you know maybe top eight, top sixteen, and whatever, top twenty, yeah. four. And then you get to that, then the one where it's in a damn stadium. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I think it's maybe it's for the better or for worse. Cause now Evo's in a big ass stadium, yeah. so it's getting Evo. bigger and bigger. So like that's, I guess I guess that's the end goal. But something about the locals, it still feels pretty good. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's cool. And then also like if you really think about the last ten years, fighting games changed as well. They kind of adapted to the tournament level as well. Like 
the games are made differently. They're made with the seasons now. They're not just made complete. They're made for something that you could prolong and have for at least four or five years now. For better or for worse. Yeah, for better or for worse, but at least the companies are taking the time to still make the games better. Yeah, they don't just drop them. Exactly. Like, uh, look at Street Fighter Five, for example. It came out in 2016. And they just at I think the game now. Honestly, if I would have bought the game now, I would have loved the game a lot more than when I first bought it. Yeah, I believe that it's a much more fun game. Yeah, but it gave you at least time to anticipate like new characters and things like that. I understand what they were doing, but I think they should have did it in a way a little different than what they did. They gave us half a game when it came out, but now it's a full fledged and bunch of characters. Yeah, I have almost uh, how many characters? Like almost forty characters now. Yeah, I think the last one that comes, I think is. The end of this month, huh? Yeah. It is, yeah, not February. Yeah. Um, it will be 40, exactly. And you have the fanfare characters. Do you have the new characters? They have a big, big, big mix of the three, a uh, big mix of the two. Like, you have, like, the returning E Honda, Zangi, uh, Saget, and, mm-hmm. and the, the old school characters that everyone loves. And then you have the new characters. I remember him from, you know, the cover of the box. Yeah. Or, you know, I remember this character from back in the arcade. Yeah. And they were. The sad thing about this game in general was that it was missing that at the beginning yeah. and you had to stay loyal to it to see it yeah. to the end and it built a lot of bad blood. Yeah, but I understand now, that. The unfortunate part about it, Street Fighter V, is that it became the brunt of like a bad, a bunch of jokes about how bad it was at the beginning. Yeah. It's, you, it's, it's not unwarranted. I was there for the beta, man. It was amazing and then you play the base game and the beta was better than the base game you know the yeah. base game at launch and you're like what get and the I, fuck out of and here i feel like me and you me you jinkies we were all like part of the people that bought it when it first came out yeah because we thought it was going to be a whole we lot of a different shit experience. and then you're like the fuck is this shit <laughs> it's just so it was so barren yeah it was so story mode wasn't ready yeah. like what it's still in the oven what why'd you even they announced that before the game I, that's i'm the, not gonna that's buy half big cookies you know what I'm saying? It's like telling me I'm going to get cookies and not giving them to me for like two months. Oh, they come. No. <laughs> it's just a real slow process, but they coming. No, it's like getting a box of cookies and it's like, oh, you still got to bake these halfway. Oh, man, that's not good. It's like, but I don't want I, want, I like cookie dough by itself, but then I like the regular crunch of a cookie. So I got to put this in the oven now, too. So you make me do the work. work. <laughs> and then also the issue with the fight money and. How, yeah, it was how that grinded. worked. There was a lot of issues with that too, and how expensive the costume packs were. Oh my God! You mean the seventy-five Chun Li costumes? Oh yeah, and it sadly is I I, I kind of wanted all of them because I love Chun Li. Chun Li is my favorite character. Well, guess what? What if I told you if you waited four years and you just bought Championship Edition, you yeah. would get all those Chun Li costumes? I know, right? Yeah. So Fair that's enough. the unfortunate part of that that system. Yeah. And I'll tell you which game I think did it better. Uh Tekken Seven. Tekken Seven? Because, yeah. Because I'd say Tekken Seven, which I didn't even remember this. It actually was a uh a year earlier. It was twenty fifteen. Okay. But the funny thing about that game is it was out in arcades and so technically, yes, Street Fighter uh Street Fighter Four did that formula. Yeah. And then you find out Street Fighter Five didn't. Okay. So that's kind of maybe that's probably why it turned out the way it was. It never had that time to be tested in the wild first for a long period of time. Okay. Because yeah, Tekken was the first one to come out straight console. Yes, because Tekken Seven actually had a, a, a I think a, a year or maybe a year and a half in the arcades before it was on console. Yeah. And that whole time it was in arcades, people weren't even talking about it, dude. Like they kept it tight lip. Oh, okay. And. When they first started getting around to announcing the game for the consoles, like that game was good to go. Yeah. And they 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 launched with a story mode, and it's like, you can't say you're gonna have it and then not launch with it and be yeah. like, come back in a few months, please. So, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem that a lot of people had, and yeah. so that game avoided it like from the get go. I think the one that did. not I think the one that did the best fan service overall of the fighting games that came out during this decade was Injustice 2. You don't think MKX was better about that? 
I think X MKX was good, but I think I think what what Injustice did, they improved on what MKX did. Okay. Because they used the same engine. Yeah, yeah. And they just added a lot more fanfare, and I think they're fighting. They they they, they really like went on to like the, the production of the game. They're very fan oriented. They listened to the fans. They had good online play. They did a really good balance of the game. That's true. It didn't have that really, really bad issue that MKX did before XL with the online. Mm-hmm. And the, the the additional characters they added and the and how one thing I loved and the one thing I'll give them so much credit is just how hyped you got to see it in the next character. Mm-hmm. That's true. They did a good job in building anticipation for the next character. And they were mostly, I think, mostly like really characters people cared about. That's the thing. Oh. Um, I will say like oh, I'm not gonna say all. Oh, there's always one or two yeah, that's like you had like Enchantress, no one oh. cared about Enchantress. But you had like Adam, which was a really unique character because he grew and shrunk. You had um <laughs> the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. The Ninja Turtles that's were kind of the top of the list. Yeah. Dude, that's kind of the top of the list. That's yeah. like you can't and, really get higher than that. And you just the, the amount of up. detail they put to it. Because they they all played for indiv- individuals, they all played for they all played differently. Yep. They they had some similar moves, but they all played differently. You had to do a different style when you did play as each one of them. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah. The, the like I, when you think about that, that's yeah. super rare. Yeah, it is. That's super rare. Like, but then again, I kind of want to say it was a trend that was starting in the 2010s, maybe. Because, yeah. like, if you remember Cross Tekken, they had the dude from PlayStation in the game. And it was just like, yo, all right. Because that was the time when people were like, why are you here? Yeah. Um, who else was, like, a weird... Oh, Mega yeah. Man. Like, OG the Mega Man. The weird ass... Oh, yeah. OG Mega Man and Pac-Man. Pac-Man was, like, in a mo- uh, Mokujin costume. Even Mokujin? Oh, my goodness. Yo, that's insane. But you know what? Okay, I'll give him a pass. Yeah, because those were like weird, wacky, but they were at least in universe. Yeah, you know. Whereas Injustice has such a strong universe to pull from, which is the DC universe. Yeah, and unless I'm missing something, were the Turtles in their universe? Uh, well, recently, yes, because they teamed up with Batman. Um, Got you. Okay, see. So, yeah. so they did but have that... a team up with Batman, but that was like years after. Oh, it was years after. Okay, yeah. uh... like you know what I mean? Like that's a huge deal. Turtles, yeah. that's a huge yeah. deal, and like just and this uniqueness of how they played. I think that just them doing a great job and how they played was a big thing about it as well. Yeah, there's so you could probably say that's the best fighting game cameo. Yeah, much better than Jean Claude Van Damme as as Guy Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, oh <laughs> uh, shit. Um, so what we should do, which is what you brought up, is to. Oh, Hellboy was a big one. Yeah. Yeah, damn. See? Yeah. I didn't play. I didn't get to play those two. Because I fell off the Injustice bandwagon. Yep. Like, I was on Tekken. Yeah, that makes sense. Because season pass, man. Freaking geese. Come yeah. on, dog. That's ridiculous. Right. That's still one of the most hype moments. I remember they announced him. I think it was Evo. Was it 2017 or 2016? Yeah. I think it was 2017. And they had geese come out, and yo, it was a stadium full of people just like, holy shit, what? Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Then they went on to have Noctis from Final Fantasy, that yeah. dude from The Walking Dead that killed Glenn. Uh, uh, you knew, uh, Megan. <laughs> Megan. Uh, now they have more characters, too. They, they brought in classics like Lei Wu Young. Yeah, he was missing for a good long while. Yeah. Uh, Anna Williams was gone. Yeah. And the chick from Six, Zafina. And then she, you know what? Not to gloss over her, because she got a really cool makeover. Yeah. That incorporates some of the story from Six, which is like, all right, they're not going to throw that away? Okay. Okay. Right. So, but we want to talk about the, for the 2010s, our favorite 10. Try to come down to Whether a little. 10 or 5? You want to do five? I think five. It's really hard. It's a lot of games. Yeah, so it makes you choose, pick and choose. We got to do ties. There could be ties in here. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so 
you know what? Let's go back and forth. So I'll pick five. You pick. Uh, I'll pick five. Then you do your number five. Do number four. Number four. Number three. Number three. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. my number five will be uh, Teshinoku versus Capcom. Okay. Cool. Just because you you shot that out that it came out within the decade, and I love that damn game. Yeah. Um, See, I think the play. I wish I did. It was but... a precursor to what Marvel vs. Capcom three became. Um, I think it played better than Marvel's Capcom three. Um, it was not simpler, but it was just uh, like I think the uniqueness of the characters, especially the Tenshinoku characters, uh, helped the game elevate, and I thought it was a better game. Mm. Okay. Um, so honorable mention would be Marvel's Capcom three because they didn't make my list. <laughs> Even though Deadpool, I love Deadpool. Yeah, he's really good in that game. He's the he's the like he beat you with his energy stick. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that'll be number five. Where are you number five? I'm trying to see. Because I forgot Soul Calibur Five came out in that span. I for, It was a big gap between five For-ish, and uh, six. six and I forgot. Five, yeah. um, damn it. I don't. Do I have any another game that I've played more than that? I guess. You know what? Seeing as how. Okay, okay. Uh, my number five would be Tekken Tag 2. Tekken Tag 2? Okay. Yeah, that came out in 2011. And you know what? That was that's a sequel to one of my favorite fighting games, period, because Tekken Tag, I always thought was a really good, a really good game. Tag. Like, uh, to be honest, I like it more than, like, three. I like it more than five. And these are the ones I really like a lot. Okay. But like I like it more than like it's probably like my favorite. It's probably my favorite Tekken games like to play to play. Okay. Like I like the novelty of going back and seeing the blocky, you know, character models in three. But I still think that Tekken three had a stiffness to it. Okay. That wasn't gone yet until Tag. And then like from Tag, that's where that's where I feel modern Tekken comes from is Tag. Okay. It's like it got rid of the, the the controller lag to the stick. That was like it made three fighting games feel like off, and in in, in in like comparison to a two D game where every movement was exact. Yeah. And so like Tekken Tag One was the one that was like, yeah, okay, I, I really really like this. And I mean, you know, the endings were like nothing, but still. And so I didn't know they would ever make a Tag Two. Okay. Like I didn't think it was gonna be a real thing, and they did, and it was cool. And one of the cool things about it, and I still think it really did have an effect on like how much more I like the game, was the music video they made for the game. Okay. With Snoop Lion. And the funny thing was that if you knew the players that played in tournaments and stuff, they had some of them in the video. And it was like this weird little like house party where they broke out into a Tekken fight. Yeah. And then they it was stupid. But remember Snoop Lion? That was the thing. Yeah. And then he had he has a stage in the game, which is hilarious. It really is. Um, but it's really good. I think that was the first game. I think it was the first game with supers too. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't remember if it has. Yeah, it did I have like the super moves. I'm trying to remember. Like, no, no, it was the first one with Rage Drive. That's what it was, where you get down to the end and the bar, like, turns red. Okay. It had this cool thing where you did, you could play as more than one character. I mean, you could only pick to play as one character, but your rage your rage gauge is like halfway or some shit, which made you like super dangerous. Okay. So it was like that whole challenge of the game too. Like, it was pretty cool. Yeah. It was pretty cool. It was unbalanced, but it was cool. So that's my five. Okay. Uh, my number four will be Mortal Kombat X. Okay. I, I actually have it, like, I think between that and 11 is, like, very close. Mm-hmm. I think I, I think it'll be a tie between them two, the 10 and 11, because I think they both are unique in their own way, and I think what Mortal Kombat 11 is doing now is just stronger with the online support and their tournament play and all that stuff, and what they're bringing in and how they did it this time around was a lot better. But X just was so much fan service while it was while it was out during that time. Mm, that's true. So X that is 100% eleven true. would be tied for me for number four. Okay. What's your number four? Oh, for four. 
Four for me is King of Fighters 13. Okay. That came out in 2010. And that was like the I'm sorry for KOF 12. <laughs> My bad. Like they literally <laughs> kind of had to redo the game because if you play uh, KOF 12, it felt like what Street Fighter 5 felt like. was like, okay. Yo, what are the rest of the characters at? Yo, where's the rest of this game at? Yeah, and this is something that you kind of need for that those kind of games, especially for King of Fighters, dude. Yeah. Like when you have teams of three, or I think it was yeah, it was three. It wasn't four. Yeah. Um, but like, if you've ever seen it in in motion, it's probably one of the best looking fighting games ever made. Okay. They went back and redraw everything, so like the arc of the twelve and and thirteen yeah. only really had a short time frame, so. I know. I wish they would go back to it because fourteen doesn't look anything like that at okay. all. But yeah, it was really good. It had terrible online though. Okay. And it has some of the hardest combos to execute I've ever seen in a fighting game. It's just like I might never do that shit, but it looks cool. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, my number three. My number three will be Killer Instinct. Okay. I had it. I had it so much fun with that game. That was one of like it was an Xbox One launch title, mm-hmm. and honestly, this kind of it went in the way of what Street Fighter Five did. It was like kind of like a quarter of a game, but they kept adding stuff and adding stuff every month instead of having it like a yearly kind of thing. They added stuff every week and shit, and they did a really good job of it. The gameplay was solid, very Street Fighter ish, but a different kind of style, more combo based. Okay. Okay. So I dug it and it had a battle toad, so it made me happy. Yeah. Cool it had weird characters. It had the Arbiter, it had uh, General Ram, and they just had weird characters and just fun stuff to play, and it was a fun game. Cool shit. Cool shit. I would number three. Uh, my number three is a weird pick, but I have a personal attachment to it because I actually made content with it, and okay. that's Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Oh, yes. And that I came out like in 2012. Yeah. Um, the world was supposed to end in 2012. Remember that? Yeah, it was. Just the end of cross tagging. The, the, that game had a, it had terrible PR because yeah. that was the first time DLC became a real problem in fighting games. Yeah. Because Capcom lied to people and said the disc, the disc was, it was empty, yeah. which that was all that was on the disc, and that's when we learned about. Oh, yeah, they sell you a key for $20. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the game already on the disc, and they sold you a key that gave you, like, the little unlock to access, like, the other 16 characters. It was, like, a grip. Yeah. I forgot exactly how many. And that shit was the first time I ever seen. Like, that was probably the first time in a major, um, in a major way that people were mad at a fighting game. Like, I've ever seen people come out of their way to be like, make videos on the internet and talk shit about it because you know that was that was still new yeah that's 2012 where like again like we were saying the fighting game scene was growing and stuff so they were streaming games and and all that stuff people got pissed the fuck off um so capcom got in trouble they changed their ways they just they just decided hey yeah now we're just not gonna put it on a disc and price it at a ridiculous price so that's why the costumes are so expensive now yeah um I'm not saying anything good about this game yet, <laughs> um, but the positive stuff is like, yo, I love all the characters in the game. Okay. They probably picked some of the best Namco, I mean, Tekken characters. Yeah. Put in. They got the Mishimas. They got King. They got uh, Julia. They got uh, who's the? Not Bruce. That's the, uh, that makes me sad. No Bruce. They got Horang, and it was interesting to see them put that character in a fighting game like he's an interesting like just as a fighting game as a fighting style in general uh yeah. jeet kundo yeah um no he's not jeet kundo that's how i'm law uh taekwondo he's, he's taekwondo thank you yeah all that stuff to see him do his moves in 2d was pretty cool um the one thing i just want to say me and, and the homie dr snipe made a combo video or actually made a bunch of combo videos for that game okay like, that was one of the few combo systems at the high level, I could grasp it. Okay. And my favorite character was Broken, which was Guy. Yes. I love that. <laughs> I, I hardly ever picked top tiers in a fighting game. Yeah. This happened. My favorite character was Broken. That was so good. Okay. Love it. 
All right, my number two. My number two is really tough to pick, so I'm going to give it a tie between them two. Mm-hmm. Uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate. Okay. And Dragon Ball Z Fighters. Good choice. Good choice. I think they both... I, I think Dragon Ball came out the gates without knowing knowing what the fuck it was going to be. And then when it showed the first demo of it, everyone was fucking shocked as hell. Mm-hmm. I think it was it it was the game that everyone wanted Marvel versus Capcom Infinity to be. Yeah, I can see that. I I think I think when they saw that they were like, and they saw the Marvel like, Ugh, like why? Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, it looked it's a fantastic looking game. I'm not a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, and I'm I've been playing and I got into the game and I got into the characters because of the game because I I'm not a Dragon Ball Z fan whatsoever. Yeah. But I liked it. I liked the way it played. It was very fun, very easy to pick up, um, and it was just a fun game. And then Smash Brothers uh, Ultimate is just a... If you like Smash Brothers, you know what Smash Brothers is. It's, it's a big fighting game of all your favorite characters on in Nintendo and then other uh, companies and everything like that. Everyone played unique. The fact that they added, like, Terry Bogard, was, I was extremely happy to see him and, like, Ken Ryu and... Seeing Banjo Kazooie and Xbox giving him up to play in those games and stuff like that, it was really cool. The spirit style side of things are really fun to play if you could get into it. Um, but it played really well, so I had to give them to a tie. Mm-hmm. I just like watching people play that game. Yeah, I I think I I watched that one to be played. Um, I have a few honorable mentions, but I'll wait till we do finish our countdown. And there's some that I just wanted to give a shout out because those were some good fighting games as well. So that's your number two? Uh, number two, yeah. They're tied. Okay. Uh, for, num- for me, for Those. number two, um, I'm trying to think of the 2010s, of the game I played like more of. Um, it would probably be MK... Uh, I want to say 9. MK9, okay. Because... It was the one I had more fun with. Okay. I uh, I bought like the the collector's edition, so I have the cool ass Scorpion and Sub Zero bookends. Me too. Um, <laughs> I got the extra code. Like some for some reason they gave me like an extra code, so I had like two Ermax. Oh, nice. I went like that that when that game came out, and I knew that they were reinventing the wheel with it. Yeah. It just made me so hype. It was like we're going back to the basics. This is literally starting from the ground up. Um, but we're all here. Ed Boon is still here. Yeah. Like this is not some cash in. It's gonna be like, like this is it. It's back, dude. Like remember the deception and all that? Nah, we gone. And then it made me buy the movie again. Like, cause I wanted all the characters <laughs> too. Cause the yeah. movie came with Jade. So yeah. I was like, I'm buying the movie. I'm buying the, the collector's edition. Like I normally don't buy like, any of that shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it just got me back into Mortal Kombat again. Like yeah. you know, the rest of Rust Cycle. Rest like Tony sat down and played it for a while. Like it was just fun. Yeah. Super fun. Um, and it has one of the best story modes in any fighting game. Yeah. Um, I think it I think that's an important game as well. Cause uh, again, my 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 tie up for number three was MK uh, X and eleven. And I think that's where the game that's where the new gameplay started and it kinda risen from within that into injustice. Justice 2 did the gameplay even better and then went into at 10 and 11 even stronger. True. So, like, That's they true. really involved that gameplay because they kept the same gameplay. They just tweaked, tweaked it for each game and I think it just got stronger and stronger. Yeah, I agree. And they had a I cool agree. suit. And Freddy Krueger was in that game. Freddy and Kratos on Kratos. the PS3. Yeah, if you had the PS3, Kratos was in it. And it was wow. a good game. It was a good story. I think they all had good stories. Mhm. Mhm. That's but well, you know what? Yeah, that's the that's one of the things you can credit credit it for is being the genesis of this new trilogy of Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I agree. So it's it's yo, it's kind of funny how this is like to me the new Star Wars, this Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, because I think they did a good job in just really getting you engaged with the storyline now because they actually really telling you a story and you're playing through it and you're learning about more of these characters and it just made it more fun like that's why i don't mind buying these more like when it comes out yeah i got the last two collector's editions mm-hmm. i got the scorpion uh, the sub-zero statue 
Ah, uh, yes. That was and for what? X? For X, yeah. Okay. It was the new sc- the shredder looking store, Scorpion. Uh, so the okay. shredder looking sh- uh, Sub Zero. And then the other one, it was the helmet, right? The head. The head. Yeah. The that's bust. Um, Loki's best friend. <laughs> she sits next to it. Like, that's her best friend. Right out the box. Mm-hmm. Like, what's up? It's a big ass box. Like, it's, it's on top of the box of, that it came in, and it's just a big ass box. It's still, like, it doesn't set a sink or sag? No. Really? It's wow. a strong box. What? It's not just cardboard, is it? No, it's a thick box. It's something else, right? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. It's anyway. a box, and then it has the cover of a box, like the. Oh, it has something else, like the thing when you put yeah. a box within a box and yeah. like slide out. I oh, got you. Yeah. Um. It. It. Honestly, yeah. I, the collector edition is always really cool, and then it got me wanting to buy the season pass for these games because the characters they've been That's, getting, like yeah. from, um, if you go to nine, nine had Freddy Krueger. It had Freddy Krueger. It had. It right? had a few people. It had Leatherface. Yeah, that's the thing. No, no, no. That was X. That X was had X. Leatherface. X had Leatherface and Jason. Yes. And that one had Freddy and I think Predator. No, Predator is in, in X. Uh, Predator's in X too. Alien. And Alien too. The next Alien too. Well. There's another one that was a special guest. Well, Kratos was PS3, but there was another one that was a special guest. I'm um, looking at it now. No, it only had Freddy. It was yeah. Freddy, okay. Rain, um, uh, Blind Kenshi, the okay. old one, okay, and Scarlet. Okay, okay. So um, ten had like the, the, a lot of. They started doing the, like, the movie team ups, and then if you go to Injustice Two, they did they did the same thing as well. Yeah. And then it came upon for there, and then X Eleven has uh, like Spawn coming, which I can't wait to. See. I want to see him. Like show him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I almost know. time. It's yo, almost I time. I seriously do not care about the other characters. I don't. I just want to see Spawn. I was like, yo, Spawn should have been first. It's almost time. <laughs> yeah, it's March, right? He's from No, March. no. I, I thought he March. was February. Uh, no, nah, um, Joker is this month. No, February. I thought he was next month. He's February? I think he's March. I hope not. Yeah. I hope he's still not. But yeah, that would be the time I go back into MK11 is when Spawn comes out. Mm-hmm. You better have his axe. <laughs> yeah, I, like he, he was I would love it if he had it a variation that was medieval spawn. Yeah, that would be cool. I I I, I think they will have that because they you could switch the suits and they have the special suits and everything. They I I think that might have a big ass sword as a variant though. Yeah, I hope so. All right, so that'll be your number two is two? Mortal Kombat yeah. nine. Um, uh, my number four. Huh? No, you should say the year was twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Yeah, yep. they came out like every three years, like a, like four year space between. Almost exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They got they got something good going with them, especially with injustice. Having injustice in between the twos, I think helped them a lot too, because then now they can make a, a milder version of a fighting game that still gets the fans going. It's a it's the right way to do the biggest budget fighting game. Yeah. Plus it. People put it in perspective recently. It was like it is actually the biggest budget fighting game. Yeah. So. So, yep. so before number one, um, I, I I guess we say three honorable mentions, like three fighting games that you would just want an honorable mention for this, for these countdowns. Uh, Skullgirls would be one I want an honorable mention. I think it was a very unique fighting game, very uh, very indie game, um, very fun. I know Jinkies like talked about it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say Street Fighter Five because when it first came, we hated it, and then it became a better game. Yes. So now that's true. It's a good game, and it's really fun to like pick up and play. And I like the characters they had. Ah, uh, okay. That's yeah. I mean, I agree too. It's yeah. still fun to watch. I still watch it all yeah. the time. And um, so. I'll have to say it's Tekken Seven because Tekken did not make my list, so Tekken Seven would be my honorable mention. mm Hmm. Oh, for me? Yeah. Uh, my own three. Okay. Well, I'd look up a game just to see what year it came out. Yeah. It's a gear. It's a game that it never got to make it to full retail. Okay. And the team got swallowed up. Not swallowed up. They got bought out. Okay. They've got bought by by uh, Riot Games. Okay. Which is Le- not League of Legends. Riot is. Yeah, League of Legends. They're League of Legends. Okay. Yeah. And they're the ones working on their fighting game. Okay. 
which is why that game is going to be awesome. Okay. Which may that might be the first League of Legends thing I'll play, and it's called Rising Thunder. Okay. And it was this game with the robots that came out in 2015, and it was like I was only in the alpha state, and it was a bunch of people again from the fighting game community that came together to make a fighting game. Okay. And then it was, I think it was backed by the two guys that ran evo okay like i think they had a majority stake in it cool but it's it's again that's kind of a success success for success story from the community okay of they made a thing and this actually it might not be credited but it's one of those fighting games that it influenced other things so in street fighter 5 there's two characters have that have something called simplified inputs yeah and also well see because this came out before um it's a thing that that rising thunder rising thunder made yeah. like accessible on a fighting game level it was like it had all the really cool um high level things that you can do like the the tracks the tick throws the the, the frame traps the the very intricate combos you could do but the inputs were literally only forward in a button yeah. down in a button back in a button up in a button Okay. Like a 360 was probably like back forward. Like they simplified the inputs so so there was no barrier to entry to just playing the game. Okay. And it had a really good tutorial, like a uh, worded tutorial, but the, that, the, the they, devs, they wanted you to see it. So there were like mad videos teaching you how to play the game. That actually reminds me of Power Rangers. And that's the, one of the things I was going to mention. It was one yeah, of the games that, on my list you know, was Power uh, Rangers. Sadly, yeah. sadly, I want to mention, yeah, that would be one of mine too. <laughs> yeah, that's like the other one. And that, see, that's, that is what I'm saying by Rising Thunder, pioneering that Yeah. and getting that accepted. Because before then, it was actually frowned upon to put simplified controls in the fighting game. Yeah. Because basically that's saying you don't want any type of uh, skill set. Yeah. When people realized it's not the inputs that's the skill part that's a part of it it's just how you put it together but it's also yeah it's how you use everything yeah because you could do fireballs from here until sunday but if you can't play against another person yeah and you just get your ass beat you ain't that good because you you have more to learn grasshopper you yeah. know what i mean and there's a few games uh, like big games are, are like that dragon ball fighters i'll say is one too that's very similar to that Mm-hmm. It has the one button input, like forward, back, up, down, left, and then you just combine the things. Yep. So, like, again, that was the thing that was back then. Also, shout outs because um, of the same thing about uh, Battle for the Grid. Yeah. That is an FGC community based game. Yes. Because yes. one of the main guys on the team that they, you know, he's, he's the, like, I think he's like head consultant, at least for, the, you know, the fighting portion. Yeah. I don't know what his programming part is, if any, but he's one of the top Marvel 2 players. Yeah. And so they basically just had a pipeline via him to get feedback on what to do and what not to do because yeah. that could have very easily have been a trash game. Yeah. It could have been a cash in, a trash game. Look at these characters. Hey, you know who these are. You're going to buy it. Yeah. And then you're going to play it. You're going to go, eh. And then you're going to forget about it. But because they took the time to make sure everything was like good enough on a casual level like with the controls yeah it's very simple cool. that you can, everything is laid out for you to do it's very easy it's just the complicated part is putting it together yeah and they have that depth so that's why i like that game it's su super like it's super high on my list um battle for the grid and rising thunder yeah um and third game shout outs to um so caliber six okay that game it shouldn't be so good it really shouldn't dude like i sadly wish i played it more like i, I have it, the game i should play it more <laughs> it has one of the first it has, not one of the first it has one of the best like uh the way you fight your way through a story mode yeah like in a long time since like alpha three where mm -hmm. you like level up your character and go through yeah because I there there is uh, videos of those on the Red Side Clone uh, YouTube page if you want to check them out. Okay. Me going through like the early stages of the Soul Calibur Six um, story mode. Um, it introduced me to one of my favorite characters in a while, uh, which I still think is stolen from Tales. Okay. Um, the character Grow. Okay. 
Um, it's t- it has two B in it, so that's ridiculous. Yeah. Which again, I'm saying like the 2010s introduced this whole concept of it doesn't matter where you're from. Yeah. Come and just be in my fighting game, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so like it continued that tradition, and it has the Witcher on the cover, dude. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah, Witcher was in the game. Uh, like he wasn't even like a guest character he was made to be in the game he like fits that's in, awesome he fits the game and the parts when you interact with him are actually really cool yeah he fits <laughs> the style of the game because how he how he fights like his gameplay fits soul caliber it, yep. it reminded me of spawn when he like his spawn the spawn actually fit the the the, gen, the, the storyline yes yeah because it was supposed to be uh even kratos kind of fit in the storyline somehow mm-hmm. some way that's true even uh, Altier. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Altier. No, no, no. That's not Altier. It's the no, other guy. It was, it's Ezio. Um, Desmond. Ezio. Ezio. It was Ezio. Yes. Ezio kind of fit during that time as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the ones that didn't fit was Yoda and Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> and Starkiller. Yeah. Starkiller. Fucking lightsabers. I think they would have <sighs> killed everybody because the lightsabers could go right through their swords. Oh, it made God. no sense. What a... Dumbass, but I still love it. It was I, awesome. Yoda was just so flew. Yoda was a bitch to fight. That was one of the most infuriating things I've ever played in a fighting game. <laughs> it was, you know, what it reminded me of. Remember Gon from um, Yes, Gon. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's why they put him in there from Tekken Three. Like he was, he was that annoying. Yep. Terrible. Like farting Terrible. and shit. <laughs> it's Asshole. Awful. But yeah, that's my three shout outs. Uh, I just want to uh, uh, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Like, I, I completely forgot about that game. Um, it's probably one of my favorite games uh, right now. Like, I've been playing it a lot. They just added Daishi, and Daishi fucking badass. He's a cool character, yes. That is, right now, my team is uh, Tommy, the Green Ranger, uh, Daishi, and Shadow Ranger. Shadow Ranger, awesome. I love Shadow Ranger. Shadow so Ranger is cool. fucking badass, too. Also, Guilty Gear XR is really cool. Yeah, Guilty Gear. Like, I think Guilty Gear. Um, gets that's, honorable that's ridiculous. They helped a lot of the fighting game community as well. So that was a strong game. One of the, I would put it. I would go far so far as to say that's the best looking fighting game of the 2010s. Is yeah. Guilty Gear XR. Okay. Because it's that's actually 3D. Yeah. What you're looking at looks like 2D. Yeah. That's actually sprites. That's I mean not sprites. That's actually 3D models walking around. Yeah. That's some of the best technology. I've ever seen they used it for, like, um, how did you do that dragon ball but i mean but that's arxis yeah, yeah that's exactly. what i'm saying they're the pioneers of that but yeah. it was first in xr so i'm like yeah. dude how the fuck did you do that yeah yeah right. so my number one my numero uno it'll be injustice two okay uh injustice two one it gets like number one just because fucking ninja turtles <laughs> I can see that. Who knew? Like, who a really knew strong I, case. I needed the Ninja Turtles in a fighting game? It's a really strong case, man. I'm um, just saying. I think just the gameplay itself, the storyline itself, um, just how they did the community, the battle worlds, and all that stuff. I think it kept you engaged in the game. I liked the downline play. I liked it, everything that had to do with this game. I think I played this game more than any fighting game I did in this decade. Mm hmm. Like, I spent a lot of time. I got back into the game and everything like that, too. Um, everyone played unique, but uh, everyone played unique, but it had, it had a lot of good, good things about that. The one thing that 100% sold me was the Ninja Turtles. The dumb actually making them four different characters with one sprite was smart. Yeah. I it think so, too. the weapon, and they're the different turtle. I think just the amount of love they put into them man yes. like they took their time dude dude i i remember the day i saw the trailer that of trailer. the turtles uh... and i jumped out my seat and i fucking <laughs> ran around my house excited man. i was so fucking excited for them it's so good too that was like, like my childhood like high childhood that's like one of the best <laughs> like trailers for like anything in a video game in a long i, I time, actually so. will say and really I'll, good i'll put this out there that's probably the best cameo of the decade i would agree yes i would agree if you yeah if you want to say best fighting game cameo yeah that's yeah that's mm. and there's some good ones i'm trying to think like I'm, geese is pretty pretty high up there Geralt for me from witcher Gerald is from Witcher. Uh, fuck. Uh, right now you have a. Uh, well, we only know Spawn. Yeah, Joker. Uh, Joker hasn't come out yet, so he don't count in the decade. 
That's true. No, yeah, he's scheduled for this month. You know? Um, yeah. I honestly will say, um, Jerry yeah, Bogart. He's up there. Smash Brothers. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Joker, that's unexpected. Joker and Smash Brothers is pretty interesting. That's yeah. the Persona one. Um, I mean, Ryu being in Smash Brothers is kind of. I know what. Uh, but he was I in Smash Brothers before that. I, oh yeah, he was in Brawl. Well, I yeah, mean, but, he was in Brawl. No, no, not Brawl, not Brawl. The, he wasn't in Brawl. He was in the regular version of Smash Brothers for yeah. Switch, not Ultimate. Yeah, so he made. Right. A, he was already in the game, so he don't. It doesn't count. What's it called? Smash Four. Uh, no, it's just uh, Super Smash Brothers. Wii U. No, no, four. The one that Wii U first appeared is four, and then Ultimate is the one after, right? Uh, it's Super Smash Brothers Wii U. That's the name of it. Oh, it's just called Wii U. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. And then um, this one, he, 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 yeah, he was already in the game. Um, He's already. I mean, uh, it's still within a decade. Still. Yeah. And oh, fucking Banjo Kazooie. Right. That was that, a big. That was a big it. um <laughs> thing because Xbox, Xbox and and Nintendo got friendly. That's true, but you know they still know Rare. Like we still, they still have that relationship between yeah. between Rare and Nintendo, which is cool. Yeah, so that was actually really strong. And but it had to be on their Xbox. Xbox had to give permission for Banjo Kazooie. No, I'm just saying it, people know it because yeah. of one. So yeah, that's yeah. why it's like it's a it's a powerful thing. Otherwise, it'd be like who cares? Yeah, because I like, remember seeing the trailer and motherfuckers on YouTube fucking crying about it too. <laughs> so, well, um, I to again to their defense is just. You would never think you'd see it. Yeah, that, that was the, that was the same. That was my reaction. Like I understand the reaction. I had the same reaction with Ninja Turtles. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> and like, That's which one good. I'm gonna be now? <laughs> <laughs> true oh, that. Man. True that. You know what would have been even better? Well, mm-hmm. not better if they add a shredder. Yeah. Or have Sub Zero have a shredder costume. I mean, well, he kind of did turn into Shredder, didn't he? Yeah. Like kinda. his look, his helmet yeah. looks like Shredder. Yeah, he, yeah, that's that's why in like MK9, I called him the no MK10, I called him the the Shredder Sub Zero. Mm-hmm. He looked like mm-hmm. Shredder. But yeah, they could they could easily did like a fucking like a special suit of Shredder for Sub Zero. Uh, yeah, they should have. They should have dope. Or Batman. Yeah, all right, that makes kind of more sense too. <laughs> all right, I'll take that. Or Batman, anyway. Yeah, but my number one would be Injustice too. Okay. Um, I talk a lot about how good Tekken is, but I really didn't. This probably, when I think back to at least the 2010s, and since we disqualified Street, uh, Street Fighter Four. Yeah. There's probably no other fighting game that I had more like what is like viewing pleasure watching the hype ass moments from yeah. except uh marvel 3. yeah so i'll have to say my game of the 2010s is, Mar- is ultimate marvel it's yeah. like that game's kind of a dream come true like because you have to remember that there were 10 years yeah. <laughs> of the of no versus games yeah they were acting a literal dry spell of 10 years people thought it was never gonna happen yeah and I remember the first time they had the official renders of just the characters in the black backgrounds. Yeah. And you saw the style. It was like striking. And you were like, man, I don't, I don't really, I'm not really feeling this. And then once you started to, to, to get the screenshots of the characters with the backgrounds yeah. and you realized that they were just like, it, it blended together because they were essentially recreating a comic book page for every fight. So you you don't really you don't really get it until you know what it's trying to emulate, and so you realize that's why all the characters have these harsh black lines and everything. Yeah. Um, the win pages are literal pages, like you can see like the little corners and the boxes and whatnot. Yeah. You know, the, the dividers and everything, and then the story mode basically was just going through a comic book. Yeah. And the funny thing about the game is most people think about it. It only had the competitive stuff, but the cool thing about Ultimate Marvel was that it put that universe mode in there. And like that thing was just like take the limiters off and let's make this the most ridiculous versus fighting game ever. So it kind of predates Dragon Ball in that you could see some incredibly ridiculous stuff that wasn't even in the game. Like yeah. like base game, like tournament level, because you couldn't play that with other people. Yeah. Like except the thing online. Um like it had a lot of cool stuff in it, man. It has a lot of cool music. It has Wesker in a fighting game, dude. Yeah. It's got 
it's got the whole like Resident Evil fighting crew. It's got Chris Jill, Wesker. It's got Bionic Commando in the game. It's like if you like Capcom stuff, like this yeah. is like probably one of the coolest things ever made. Deadpool. I mean, the only bad thing about it is just that is this is not a beginner friendly fighting game. Yeah. It's hard as shit to get into. Yeah. Damn, man. And Deadpool was the greatest. Deadpool's in the game, voiced by Nolan North. Mm-hmm. And he like, beat you down with his life bar. Like, this is where I became a fan of Maximilian Dude. Yeah. Because he created, like, these things called Assist Me videos for this for that, like, that franchise. He said he worked on it. Yeah. Like, he created those videos, like, on mm-hmm. his YouTube channel. Yeah. No, he said he actually worked on the game. No, he was partnered with, yeah. like, yeah. Oh, he yeah. was partnered with Capcom for oh, those okay. YouTube videos. Oh, cool. Like, he started making some of them for uh just on his own yeah and then capcom was like here here's a budget (laughs) here's a little more budget and it was like all right so now he could do like different effects and shit yeah like he and he did a whole long ass one for the remake which i give a shout out to as well the remake of uh mvc1 and marvel superheroes yeah like he made a like a half an hour like move like little short movie with that one where captain commando was like an evil bad guy and shit oh cool it was amazing like like a lot of stuff went along with my experience of ultimate three and that's why i like it so much more than like, everything else okay so yeah Respect. dope Respect. tournament scene yeah. dope game awesome soundtrack yeah you can see ant-man stamp like stomp somebody out it's hilarious it's yeah, good you should get shot it's really good bow and arrow. it's really good they made a taskmaster for this game Taskmaster, so dope. The alternate skin is the cool one. Yeah, with the, the energy shield. Eight, like um, what? It's the Alvin Lee version. What? That shit is so dope. Strider is yes. dope. Ah, yes. uh, they have the Strider, the alternate costume the, has wait, the color scheme. You don't know what model I did not like in this game. Okay, who's that? Ryu. Generic karate man. Yeah, he, he, he is the most like his vanilla. Hair is so like regular. His costume is so regular. Yep. He looks so mm-hmm. regular. <laughs> Yes, he is vanilla. Yeah. He is the essence of it. had Crimson Viper in the fighting game. Yeah, dude, she was another game, man. I you miss have, her. You have like Mega Man. You have like Iron Man, all fancy suits and all. And then no, the there's game. no there's no Mega Man. They gave oh, no, you the, zero, zero. They gave you zero. You have zero. You have Mega Man, you have Iron Man, and then you have Ryu. They gave me one of the fa- my favorite fighting game memes. Zoop, yeah. zoop, zoop, yeah. zoop, zoop, <laughs> zoop. Every time people pick, because zero was top tier. Yeah. And so all you would see was when you watch like high level play, zoop 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 mm-hmm. zoop zoop. It was like yeah, that was like, a lot of fun things came from this game. Yeah. Phoenix Wright, yeah, Phoenix like, Wright, like dude, Phoenix Wright is ridiculous. Phoenix Wright he versus really Deadpool is. was like an awesome, awesome fight because they're both like very fourth wallish characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yep. Frank West, Frank, oh, oh my this god, he's so good. They added a lot of characters. Yeah, it was a good game. I agree. So, with that. Like, Nova, Nova's yeah. awesome in that game, dude. Yeah, Nova. Unique, his theme, dude. like I, you know what? I need you need to listen to his theme. Just, yeah. well, I'll send that to you off, off okay. air. But you gotta listen to it. All right. So those are our top five get games, fighting games of the decade. Fighting games are still live and well, and have a big place in tournaments and everything like that. Uh, honestly, it's easy to pick it up. So grab yourself a fighting game and play. Yes. Do arcade it. sticks are cheap. Not all of them, but you could get a good arcade stick for at least hundred bucks. Okay. If you like arcade sticks, you don't need to mm-hmm. have an arcade stick. You can play with a controller. A lot of people play controllers. Yes, this is true. Yeah. Um. All right. So moving on. Moving on. Um. I do have uh lightning collection news. Uh. They just released the images of the first next three waves of wave three. Uh. Rocky, the blue, Zero Ranger, uh. Blaze, um. Battle, uh. Beast Morphers. Uh. He's one of the villains of Beast Morphers and. Jack, um, what's the name? Um, Jack. Okay. Jack, yeah. Um, SPD Red Ranger. Yes. About time. I'm actually excited for that one. Um, they just show his face and everything like that. There's still a mystery on Trini because Trini is supposed to be part of the set. So there's still no word and when she's coming out or if she's coming out and whose head she will have. Because remember, Trini is the first one that actually had two. Rangers under, under her helmet. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, uh, black and red also had other ones, but you know clearly Jason was going to be the red ranger, and then um, Zach was going to be the black. Gotcha. So, okay. 
Um, we got those. Um, they come out. They said June. I could see them. I could see them going into stores around March or April. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, those are coming out. I'm a little excited for those. I mean, I'm just glad they. Uh, finally, do you think they'll? Ho- no, they're not gonna do whole teams, are they? I hope so. <laughs> I hope eventually they'll get like whole teams done. Like uh, it's so far, Mighty Morphin has at least five Rangers. Who's missing? She is Trini. Right, have, is the is the last one? Well, you have Zach, you have Jason, you have Tommy. Both versions oh. of Tommy. You is there have, a Billy? Uh, Billy's for way four. Okay. Um, well, Zach, you got the shield, Zach. You don't have a plain uh, Black Ranger, Zach. But you still got a Zach. And Kimberly. Yes. So you got most of Mighty Morphin done already. Um, you need Trini, Billy, and then maybe a regular Zach. Yeah, I mean, for collective purposes and just accuracy, you would want that. But yeah, I kind of want that. If they didn't do it, I wouldn't be that mad. No, me either. Uh, like the Gold Ranger, like I'm still gonna get the two pack, even though the Gold Ranger is coming back, coming out as a single Ranger. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Like for how, collective how, purposes, I need the red and gold. How long after is the Gold Ranger? The single uh, gold Ranger is supposed to be in wave wave five. Okay, so wave four is set to be Billy, the the Ranger Slayer Kimberly. Um, I think it was, and there's two other ones I can't really think of. I kind of drawn a blank, but mm-hmm. it's rumored to be two other. Uh, but it, those two are like the rumored ones. Okay, got gotcha. you. Uh, but I know Billy and, and Ranger Slayer Kimberly is supposed to be set for, set for that. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Collection. Power Rangers. Oops. This is lightning. And then they give me lightning. Lighting. <laughs> lighting collections. <laughs> like you know what it is? I bet you that was like one of the most common mistakes when you're looking for that exact thing. Probably. Because uh, I'm always like looking up shit. I'm always looking up shit, um, but yeah, the, the, I'm actually really happy with the, the Power Rangers uh, Lightning Collection. I've been really high in trying to collect every single one of them. Right now, I'm only missing one, which is the San Diego Comic Con exclusive one. Okay. Everything else I have, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, I just want to see Wave Five, because um, Wave actually Wave Four. Uh, yeah, so Wave 3 is supposed to be, yeah, Kimberly is supposed to be part of, uh, no, Trini is supposed to be part of the Wave 3. They never showed her, though, so they only showed three figures. Even in the, the product, when they, 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 they showed them at the toy fair, they only showed the three. They never showed, um, they never showed Trini. Really? Or Yellow the Yellow Ranger. So we honestly, honestly do not know if she's actually really coming out. <laughs> oh no! Don't do that. So uh, the so the rumor for five is Time Force Red. Okay. Time Force Red, uh, the Slay the Ranger Slayer, um, Pink uh, Kimberly, a villain from Beast Morphers. I don't know his name, but he's like a gold villain, and Billy. Okay. Wave four cool. is Trini. Uh, Rocky, um, Jack, and Blaze from Beast Morphers. So that's pretty much. And those are rumors. Uh, the the things are changed. There's a big chance that this screen doesn't come out. It comes out in the later season. Um, but hopefully, um, it comes out and see what happens. Yes, I hope so. Yes. Um, there was something else I had in mind that I wanted to say. Um. Yeah, I've been on Witcher, so that's all I've been playing. Okay, that's right. You've been playing Witcher. Yeah. So how's that? Huh? So how's that been? It's been a really good game. I kind of w- happy that I'm actually learned how to play it and actually like took the time to learn the mechanics of the game and how it works. And now I'm really enjoying it. It's very Skyrim, Skyrimish, but more story. Okay. Gotcha. Like Skyrim had a story, but this one's like more focused on one character than. Your character being made, and then it's it's it's, it's a part of the story. 
So, but it it, it always centrally follows the the guy, the Gerald. main. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, like you're him, but it's very Skyrim ish, but with him. Like in Skyrim, you're you make your character, and then then you're part of the story. Him is, is the story is focused on him. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's very Skyrim, it's a very fun game. Uh, right now on the holiday special is fifteen bucks for the complete game. That's with all the DLC and stuff. Um, I was gonna get it on the Switch. Um, I kind of still want to get it on the Switch. I just gonna wait for the price to go down because that's just a brand new game price. And okay. Like, new. I paid fifteen bucks for this shit. If it was like ten dollars, mm. I would get it. Gotcha. It's sixty fucking dollars. And there's a ton of DLC for that game, right? Uh, two. But, but like uh, they're here. Aren't yeah, they? Yeah, the Switch one it comes with the both DLC. It's not like just the game. It, it comes with both DLC, but it's still. No, no, I don't. Like they have like a game of the year edition by now already, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but it's still a, a complete. It's still a fifteen dollar game that they sell for sixty, and I'm like, nope. Really? Well, okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, yeah. So, that's something. That's cool. Um, I guess before we go, um, are there any games you're anticipating for twenty twenty? Yeah, that's like a, a grip, actually. I mean, again, I say that, but my, my have played this year list is pretty small. But because of the people I was following, yeah, there's actually like a a pretty concise list of stuff that I pretty much agree with. Okay. Um, they don't have the dates, but they have, and this was from the third. So, you know, give it two days. Yeah. So the list goes 59 days until Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I'm totally on board with. I probably um, I probably watch it and then see what it's about, and then I'll probably get it. Like I, I've never I've never been a big Final Fantasy person. If you didn't play 15, or if you didn't like if you played 15 and you didn't like it, it's like it's not gonna be for you because I could see the 15 in this game, uh, like the know. way it plays, the systems at work and stuff. Yeah. I can see it's an evolution of fifteen. I know so. It, so, okay, okay. So it's like a slower paced. It, I'll put it this way: it looks like it's like a shit ton going on and action is popping off. Yeah. But a lot of it's actually calculated stuff that's happening. A lot of like, uh, kind of like the kills the kills, yeah, kind of like you know, where a contextual move will happen. Yeah. So press triangle and Kiryu is gonna beat the hell out of somebody in this elaborate cutscene. Okay. So okay. I. I see that they've taken some stuff like that and amplified it. It's not the same heat move type of thing, but you see like triggers like pop off and you press a button and then Cloud goes and he starts to do his damn thing. Yeah. Which like cooler versions of what the limit breaks were. So I'm I'm excited to see all that. See what the summons look like. Okay. More than the one they show. But the reason I'm already pre hyped is I got to see the half an hour yeah, it was a half an hour little uh Japanese presentation. Yeah. With this super excited Japanese girl, so I was like, "All right, okay, I'm in." All right. Um, Sixty-seven days, Ori two. I didn't play the first one, no, but it's the type of game it is. It's a Metroidvania, okay, and it's a little bit on the difficult side. So a lot of people, including like Maximilian and other people, were like, "Yo, this game is the truth." So I'm interested okay. to see what it is. Okay. Um, in sixty-nine days, Neo two comes out, and like I'm gonna get that. Neo, because I. I I gotta it's hard. The first one. <laughs> I should finish that game before. Yeah, I, I should it. do it too because I have it. Yeah, I it was a free game. If you yeah. didn't, I, I think that was last month's free game, right? No, uh, the month before. Yeah, it December. Was. December? Okay. No, 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 it was November. What's? Do you know what the the free games for this month are? Uh, I can check actually. Now. Is it cool? <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. So keep going on the list. I'll, I'll tell you once I get it. Seventy six days. Uh, Doom Eternal comes out, and I know that's supposed to be really good. Yeah. I... Did you play a lot of Doom? I was never a big uh, crazy fan for Doom. Okay, I heard Doom twenty sixteen was actually really good though. Yeah, I heard good things too. I, I never played it. Uh, ninety days, another banger. Uh, Resident Evil three. Yeah. Which I can't was so fast, but I know that. When they made two, they were probably already working on three. Yeah, they probably already had that shit going. And the way it looks is just like, damn, son. I love that new engine, man. Yeah. So I can't wait. 
I love the the fact that they went back and put special stuff in the demo for Resident Evil Two. Yeah. Hear Nemesis saying stars now if you play the yeah. the new demo too. So that's pretty cool. Like Stop. I'm I'm just happy to see that whole level of care that Capcom has been putting in their games. Like with Devil May Cry Five, um, R two remake, and yeah. then like the end of Street Fighter Five. Like they put a bunch of stuff in this. Like okay, they've been listening to fans and stuff. They know people like this, but I can't wait for three. Um, Ninety days. That's uh, then one hundred and three is Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I know you said you're super hyped. I'm actually so, yeah. excited for that. I got, I got a pre-order on that. Uh, again, I'm playing Witcher right now, and it's supposed to be very similar, but just more futuristic and more story in that sense. I'm all for it. It looks really good. I know nothing. I saw I saw gameplay, and I was just like, yeah. oh, man, people have been and fucked And Keanu Reeves up. is in it. Yeah, he was on stage like, you're beautiful. Yes. But I'm in this game, so play it. <laughs> yeah. Um, 132 days it's marvel's avengers and they've yet to sell me on that game yeah i'm i'm very skeptical with that game as well i'm just like holding off and just like yeah so um um before we break the topic uh the free games are uh nathan drake collection the uncharted collection and ghost simulator what all right i gotta i gotta go oh uh, <laughs> i gotta get ghost simulator i don't think I they're up yet though Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they up this week. I think Wednesday this week. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and the last one on the list: 146 days until The Last of Us Part Two. I need and to that's, finish one. That's pretty much gonna be the swan song from Sony, I bet. Yeah. You know, this is this is the actual last year until the next console comes out. At the end of this year, there will be supposedly. Yeah. PS5 on a shelf somewhere. Yeah. Maybe we'll not on your shelf, but on the shelf somewhere. Maybe on a shelf somewhere. In an Amazon yeah. warehouse with a slave taking it off to fulfill right. your order. And they can't <laughs> and report an injury. Can't report injuries. So they can't covered in it. urine. <laughs> Jesus, this went dark. Just um, Amazon. <laughs> are there games that are not on this list that you're looking forward to? Uh you would have to tell me. Pretty much, this list so sums two. up I have all the that, stuff looking that, for. Have been, that you haven't mentioned. One, okay. Yakuza 7, like a dragon. Definitely. I'm very skeptical with it, but I'm also excited. So I'm a little bit of both because, again, I've been going hard on to the fucking Yakuza games, and I'm waiting for 5. That's why I started Witcher. So I was like, oh, by the time I finish Witcher 5, um, Yakuza 5 will be out. Mm-hmm. It comes out February. Soon. So yeah, the 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 physical copy of the remastered come out in February. I guess I should say that game too. Five. Yeah, there you go. I never played it because that's the first time in the U.S. that it's going to be in a physical disc, and I didn't get it on PS3 digital. Yeah. So I might buy it still just to own it. Mm-hmm. So I'll buy the game twice. <laughs> I I support I support you I support you because fuck it. Um, and also, um, you can actually play it on Xbox now. So, yes. You know, thing. Yeah, Welcome. they came out this month on the uh, Game Pass. Okay. Uh, Zero One, Kiwami One, Kiwami Two. So, Yakuza Seven, Like a Dragon, I want to see. Um, if you've never seen the movie, watch the movie. The movie is fucking hilarious and very cheesy. I get that. I put on my favorites. Hold yeah. on. Yeah, you gotta watch it. It's really funny. And uh, yeah, yeah, Maj- uh, Majima just like beats people with a bat. Just like in the game. Makes me happy. <laughs> and then um, the other one is, uh, it's a Lego game. I love Lego games. So the Lego Star Wars complete, uh, the fully complete story, I'm 100% behind that. Because even though they do they do did uh, the complete saga before, they actually really update their game. They really changed the whole gameplay and everything like that and make a stronger, uh, stronger gameplay to it. So I'm actually looking forward to that. This, so that'll be one I got to pre-order because they always come with like a little Lego figure I collect. Mm, all the Lego okay. games come with a figure. That's why I always buy them. The only ones I didn't buy was the Harry Potter and the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean one. But I played the uh, Pirates one eventually, but I, I I didn't get the figure for that. But like the Jurassic Park one, I have the figure. I have, there were Lego Marvel ones. I have all the DC ones. Yeah. Okay. 
And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that game. I think it's going to be really good. And I think what they're going to do is with the DLC – is going to go into Mandalorian. It's going to go into uh, Rogue One. It's going to go into um, uh, Solo, with Star Wars, the, the Han Solo movie. And it's going to go into other sides of the Force uh, movies and shit like that. Oh, okay. Like cool. maybe, the t- maybe the cartoon series, the Resistance. Because <clears throat> that's what they do. Like They'll do all the movies, and then they'll have side stories and still DLC with extra characters. And I think that's going to be the character. That's going to be the DLC stuff. Right. It makes sense. And then, um, yeah, those are only two I can really think of right now that I want that comes out next year. Maybe, hopefully, WWE does a better game than 2K1. I would hope so. Um, yeah, they need a better game, please. Maybe AEW come out with a game this year? I would hope so. Or at least an announcement of something. Yeah, they're going to get a Game Boy game. <laughs> Dude, don't say that. <laughs> all right, so yeah, that's all the two games I I think I that were on the list. I'm not I'm looking forward to, but yeah, Cyberpunk definitely is the one that I probably buy before everything else. I'm super interested in what's gonna happen with that game. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm very especially going into The Witcher Three right now. I'm very very like strong for that game because I know the Project Red X really does their shit when it comes to games like if you look at all their history of games that they had out they're all like very high caliber games that's true they did witcher 2 they did uh crisis uh crisis 2 and 3 which are very if you look at the how the gameplay looks it's fucking beautiful games uh, Witcher 2 was probably one of the best sellers on the Xbox 360 and it was an Xbox 360 <laughs> exclusive for a long time isn't it? Ever, it's, but now it's on everything, dude. Yeah, it's on everything. And then, um, yeah, so they do. They when they do a project, they do it like with all. Honestly, they, they, I think they did a new version of Bethesda, <laughs> the good version Man. now, because they're really giving the fans what they want, and they give, give, they deliver when they they do a game. So, and that studio in particular, when you hear about the attitude they have towards their fans, it's like. They don't have to bow to any corporate um, overlord, no, because they are they are their own entity, kind of like a but that's kind of like yeah. I see the parallel. It really is, yeah. um, like the, the very heyday, cool. like, the heyday very, of very, Bethesda. Very cool. Damn, because now Bethesda, I don't know what they're doing. It's like one is good and one is evil now. Yeah. <laughs> you so, know what? Can we say? Can we do a shout out to the worst games of the decade? Okay. Shout out. 76 for, for being a dumpster fire the entire time yeah stringing people along and then charging people a hundred dollars for a license at the end of the lifespan man come on y'all anthem anthem for being a dumpster fire and then the, and then ea abandoning it because yeah. it was it bad yeah because they lied <laughs> man well, i can't i just want to say i hope a lot of these companies learn from the mistakes that they kept trying to do this this year, especially EA. Yeah, I they fucked up real bad twice. Yeah, because uh, so- remember the Star Wars thing? They had to take the the purchases out of the game. Yeah, that's like how damn. Yeah. Whew. Uh, two K twenty. Two K twenty. Yeah, I hope they learn from that. Yeah, right. you know what. At least WWE 2K20, it wasn't like a company. It it was just a really crazy shit that just happened kind of yeah. thing. I, like, I agree. Like it wasn't like it wasn't like Festa trying to screw someone over. It wasn't like Bioware and EA do, like EA being what it is and kind of fuck trying to like fly. fuck Anthem. Let's not move, move on. Um, mm. 2K, a lot of the problems weren't really. Like they're like they didn't have control of like, y- Yuke's leaving in the middle of production, sucked, <laughs> mm. and they couldn't they they had to really bounce back. They had to create things and, and scratch. They didn't have a lot of the devs and all that shit. So I give them a little credit in that sense that they tried their best. But honestly, you could, I think they could have delayed it and it would have been better. But it is what it is. WWE 2K21. Hopefully they approve it. I really doubt it, but hopefully they do. That's true. So, because I true. might not buy it, I do you buy every year? 
you might not get a sell for me this year. A lot of people do. Yeah. It's bad when your influencers are just waiting for the embargo to run out. Right. To tell the truth. It's uh, not even shit talking. It's tell the truth. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. So. Like, I, I, it's crazy. It, it is crazy. Like, I wish they did it better. I, 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 it could have been a, such a better game. But, like, yo, I, I feel like you even have, like, YouTubers that don't even freaking play wrestling games playing it. Cause, oh, it's a bad game. Ha, 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 ha. Because it's hilarious, dude. It really is. I hate people. It, it really was. Yeah. I can't believe what I saw. It's some of the cre- creepiest, funniest, scariest. Yeah. Just wackiest glitches I've ever seen in a video game. It's yeah. just like, wow. I didn't know they could still be this bad. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It made me believe is what it did. Yeah. It did. So that's all I got. Yeah. All right. This up. all right. That's about it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the It Gets Better I Swear podcast. I've been your host, Louis Beans. I've been here with Merc with the Mic. Yeah, buddy. Make sure you check us out. Uh, anything and everything. Red Cyclone Inc. That's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. That's here on YouTube, here on Twitch. Um, the podcast will go up on Twitch and SoundCloud. Yeah. All rest like only. And we have a WordPress. Yes. Where you at, Merc? Uh, follow us. Um, right now, we're on the channel, uh, Merc with the Mic on Twitch TV. Uh, please uh, c- try to view when you see us live. Try to view our cast. It helps us out a lot. Um, follow us on all our social medias. I do have a link tree here, so you could just click that and see all our links. But uh, you have, we have... Uh, Tumblr, Twitter, uh, Twitch TV, Merc with the Mic, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, all Merc with the Mic. Uh, our Facebook page is the Red Cycle Inc. and the Wrestling Bible page. We're very active on it. We brought back the, the pay-per-view polls, so basically everyone's having back into having conversations and everything, so we like that. Um, and um, that's it. All remember, follow Jinkies. He got them sandwiches you're not supposed to have. And bro Wait. kick his ass. Bro, kick the sandwiches. Uh, peace out. Peace. Later.